uh, dinner yesterday, at least a glass of wine. It was a great experience. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Nick. And first and foremost, the striking about Nick, he has a background in electrical engineering. So he is actually one of us. He graduated UPB a long, long time ago. And afterwards, he accomplished his PhD in educational sciences, as well as his habilitation at Ludwig uh, Maximilian University in Munich. Uh, he currently is a professor at the research unit of education and educational psychology. And also, uh, I think that we're really proud of him. He's an associate editor of Computers in Human uh, Behavior, the journal, since 2017. His research is focused mostly on educational psychology and media psychology. And most importantly, he's a really close collaborator of our laboratory and a really good friend. So Stefan knows him for more than 20 years. And for example, in the last years, we've got more than 30 papers together. So Nick, you have the script. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Actually, I, I was for some reasons prepared to introduce myself, um, but you seem to disclose uh, <laughs> almost everything I wanted to, to say. So um, thank you very much for, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here and thank you very much for coming to this presentation, which is not self-evident in such times and <laughs> under such circumstances. Um, well, there is, um, one point in, um, in the presentation, um, in my presentation that was not yet uh, disclosed and uh, which I suggested with the second part of my title, so about learning sciences. Um, so I'm, I'm working at, at the University of Munich with a very long name, Ludwig Maximilians University of München. Um, so Ludwig and Maximilians uh, were two different persons. It was not the same person with a double name. And they were two kings of Bavaria who have grounded some time ago uh, two universities that joined together and uh, built up the, um, one of the largest universities now in Germany. So University of Munich is one of the universities in Munich. And our university has um, about 50,000 um, students. And uh, recently, well, it's not, it's no longer recently. <laughs> it's <laughs> some 15 years ago. Uh, so um, my boss, I have a boss is Frank Fischer, who might be known to you from the uh, International Society of the Learning Sciences. He was the um, elected president um, a few years ago. And in 2006, he came to Munich as a chair for education and educational psychology. And shortly after that, he grounded um, the Munich Center of the Learning Sciences. Uh, what, you, what you can see here on the uh, shared screen is the web page um, of, of the uh, MCLS. You can also see the URL. Um, and uh, what I wanted to show you is that um, it contains, it, 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 it consists of a number of expertise teams. And um, the um, um, focus of these teams um, are, I think, a good description of the learning sciences. If you wonder what um, learning sciences are, you might want to have a look at the Munich Center of the Learning Sciences. And what we see here is um, first a group about general psychology, like perception, and uh, more actual uh, neurocognitive uh, psychology. Um, then we have a group on conceptual development and conceptual change. Um, and well, uh, educational sciences are often associated with children, forgetting that uh, <laughs> adults learn as well. Um, and um, so this is the expertise group uh, focused on 
children, children development, and nonetheless, um, actually each age in a, a human life from, from the early childhood uh, to the late, um, to the later part of, uh, of, of life. Um, and then we have a, a group on emotion, cognition, and learning um, focused on um, the influence of emotions on learning and cognition. About uh, effective instruction, this is, um, this is about um, teaching and teaching contents, for example, teaching mathematics, teaching physics, um, and, and so on. Uh, if you look at, at, at the names, Stefan Ufer, Birgit Neuhaus, Martin Fischer, um, these are professors for um, mathematics education, biology education, something education. And I think most interesting, Martin Fischer is the professor uh, for uh, medicine education. So he's a, a physician. Okay, next page. Um, that's ET6, digital learning. That's our focus. So it is about um, learning with media. And here you can see Frank Fischer, who is a psychologist, and Heinrich Hussmann, who is a professor for in German, it is called Median Informatik, so it's media, uh, so computer science is applied to media. I think informatics is also English, isn't it? <laughs> um, dyadic social interaction, developmental and cl clinical perspectives. Um, so yes, I think many people associate also psychology with clinical psychology, um, and this is where um, this, this focus lies. Um, and finally, but I think most important, um, research methods, from which uh, the statistics are very important, but not only. So uh, research methods is definitely more than statistics. So this is a general overview of the um, learning sciences. And um, now I can show my agenda for today. Um, as I suggested in the title, this was not only to my int to introduction of my, my, my person as a member of the Munich, Lent, the Munich Center of the Learning Sciences, um, but also um, an, an attempt to define my perspective. So learning sciences is very much psychology, very much educational sciences, very much uh, social sciences more generally, uh, but also computer science. So it's, it's um, very interdisciplinary. Um, and about the other terms, so in, in, in my title, so about smart learning um, environments, I will give a few hints rather than definitions. And the largest part of, of the presentation will be um, our smart community project, after which I will try to draw some conclusions. So talking about smart learning environments, and first of all about learning environments, I've, um, I've Googled, as you can see, it's very colorful. <laughs> and I, I do wonder if, uh, so who has a definition um, of learning environments. Um, well, I know the term, the concept of learning environment as a very typical constructivist uh, term beginning around 1990. Um, so if we think of uh, computer sciences, this is the, the point where we no longer said um, uh, computer learning program because it's, it implies something like behaviorism, like um, older and actually outdated concepts of uh, psychology. So we don't program humans to learn. Um, in, in the constructivist view, we um, offer possibilities for humans to learn and these possibilities um, 
are in the shape of um, of a learning environment. So what is what is part of a learning environment? Uh, learning materials, um, tasks, uh, questions. Um, actually everything, even the, uh, the learners themselves, even the teachers, um, of course the classroom, if there is one, or the virtual classroom, um, and, and many, many others. Um, as, I, as I mentioned yesterday, um, uh, a, very, a very important part of, uh, of, of a learning environment is uh, something that might be a conceptual artifact, something that um, guides the learners uh, through the learning process that uh, tells her what they have to do. So they have tasks to solve, um, they have materials that they can use to, uh, to solve these tasks, uh, they have resources and Resources are not only books or electronic books or some electronic materials. Um, the learners themselves and the teachers can also be human resources for learning. So learning environment is a, is a very, very um, general concept and it can be um, uh, computer supported but it doesn't have to be computer supported. So there are parts that may be uh, media or digital or uh, computer based and some parts that are definitely not. Um, about smart learning environment, I, I tried to, uh, to find a, a recent, a new definition and I googled that too. And I think it's amazing to see um, <laughs> 27,000 results. And uh, if, you, if you look in the upper left corner, that is since 2020. So it's, um, it, it seems to, to be a very, very um, important uh, term that um, becomes recently even more important than um, well, so what is the definition? I came across uh, an example. I won't show the, uh, the header of, of this is a, an article published in a IEEE uh, publication and it was something very mod modern about a haptic interface. And um, I highlighted that sentence. And there are different kinds of learners classified by how they prefer to acquire knowledge that is visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Visual learners retain information better when it is presented with pictures or diagrams. Auditory learners prefer to hear what is being presented and so on. So if I were there, or if I stood now in front of my students, I would ask everybody, uh, do you believe in that? And it seems that uh, many people believe really in that, but, um, well, learning styles, um, it's a myth. And one of, uh, one of the most uh, common and frequent, um, I would say misunderstandings, not to say misconceptions, um, because there is no uh, real research support for learning styles. So you can, you can read Paul Kirchner's um, article in detail where he explains why some, uh, some myths amongst which um, learning styles um, are not, um, not credible from a scientific point of view. Um, what I was trying to say is, um, in this interdisciplinary work, uh, we have um, we we encounter very often um, misunderstandings, uh, maybe not as big as this one. Um, for example, for using uh, di uh, different terms. So, um, in computer science, I know they they say very often uh, experiment 
So we do some experiment with, um, with some computer program uh, inputting some data and uh, seeing the results. In psychology, the term experiment is very, very special. So an experimental learning design has two uh, groups of participants, one with a treatment and the reference groups. And this is usually um, the only research design that uh, supports um, causality. So conclusions about the uh, causes of some uh, phenomena. Um, and that, that's what, one of the most uh, frequent discussions when I, uh, when I read uh, papers authored by computer scientists. So experiment. No, it's not an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> and so on and so forth. So that's, um, I think that's an interesting uh, challenge, these differences in, um, in terms between, um, between psychology and uh, computer science and um, other, um, other disciplines um, that we, we encounter in, um, in interdisciplinary work. Um, so, I couldn't really find um, a very actual definition of um, smart learning environments. Uh, so I chose to, to show you this one that is, well, in between a few years old, I think the original publication written by Carlo, uh, I think that was 2013, so it's seven years old. Um, anyway, um, in a, in a paper about smart cities, uh, we found the definition of smart, smart city as a smart environment, as a community of highly skilled people who are continuously motivated and challenged while their basic needs are satisfied. That's, that's a beautiful definition. So what happens there, the community members come together and collaborate, drawing each other to these collaborations and establishing what has been termed flow. So there is something flowing. Um, this has also been termed as uh, practice. So if we think of the community of practice um, approach by uh, Leif and Wenger. But it is more than just practice, it's also information, it's knowledge, it's um, probably data, um, it's, it's people with uh, group dynamics as well. Uh, and also intellectual capital that can be uh, regarded as part of, um, of this uh, flow. And everything enables the, the social practice and to, to support this we can use um, technology. Um, so, based on this definition, I um, um, extracted at that time three points. So, what uh, what does technology to support um, communities to make them smart? So, by technology, technology is an enabler in the development and use of conceptual artifacts. So, um, conceptual artifacts are immaterial objects that have a special um, meaning in the context of a, a community practice. So, um, well, the idea of, of research, what is research? I don't think somebody has a very accurate definition of research. And if you ask many researchers, um, they will probably all give the same definition. So this is, uh, something that needs to be negotiated. And also it can be um, received and given at, as we would do with an object. So we can, uh, we can give and receive um, um, concepts, conceptual artifacts. Um, technology also enables collaborative discourse. So the kind of um, um, language-based interaction we have um, mainly in, um, in computer-based environments, but in, also in, in every um, social um, 
environments where people uh, do something together. So they also have within this collaboration, they, they entertain a discourse. Um, and technology can also be used as a tool to monitor learning and provide feedback to improve learning and um, to improve um, the design of a learning environment. So um, these three main points uh, would define, in my opinion, a smart um, community as a, an environment for knowledge building. And well, now about the smart community project. Um, first of all, we had a very classical project. So this has nothing to do with technology. It's one of my, my very, very favorite um, pictures. It's a, it's a social network. Um, that was, well, kind of easy to, uh, <laughs> to record. So I asked everybody, um, here is a list of persons, um, and tell me how, how much do you have to do with each of them? And that, that was quite a long list. Um, of course, not everybody uh, responded to the, the questionnaire, but I got this uh, social structure. Um, and my favorite question is, we have here two research units, one for psychology, one for educational sciences, which is which? Um, the most common answer is um, psychology is on the left because um, psychologists network with each other. So you can see that this, this part of the uh, cloud is more compact and um, there are more uh, ties between the, um, between the, the participants. Um, well, yes, but this is not, it is psychology on the left, but uh, this is not the reason. The reason is if you look at the other side, you will see on the far right, you will see very many single persons uh, with just one tie to, to the community. Um, this is about uh, teacher students. The University of Munich has some 8,000 teacher students from 50,000 students in total. And um, 8,000 is, is very much. And uh, the uh, educational sciences group uh, teaches teacher students educational sciences. So they all go through there. But the, the education group has a, a very limited of, uh, number of, uh, of, of staff, so as you can see. So what they do is um, they have uh, external um, staff who work just kind of part time, just for a few hours, and um, teach the teacher students. And this is, these are the ones you, you can see on, uh, on the right. So what I wanted to say with, with this picture um, is um, social networks in, in such representations are a very powerful uh, tool that uh, bring us to a very uh, deep understanding of, um, of social processes, including learning processes. Um, yes, the, the question is how do we understand this <laughs> understanding? Um, and the key is knowing the practice. So if you know what's happening there, well, what, what kind of practice and how in which form is uh, carried out by whom, um, you can better, you can understand these um, social networks. Um, well, maybe this is not very spectacular without technology, but that continued. So we had um, in a uh, more modern uh, version, I mean, uh, computer supported, um, we got Reader Bench. So I suppose most of you have um, heard or know Reader Bench. It was developed by 
Mihai, I see. He's just um, gone, from, gone away for a minute. <laughs> so uh, Mihai and Stefan are the main uh, developers of Reader Bench, and this is a, a framework. Welcome back. <laughs> this is a framework for um, automated um, analysis of collaborative dialogue. And um, using this, we got actually very similar um, representations. So similar, that means these are graphs. Um, and they have uh, various forms. So uh, for a few years, we examined uh, communities, uh, online communities on the internet. And these were especially blogger communities. Um, I was very interested uh, to see that um, a blog is a collection of articles, but also a blog is, is, is the community behind it and uh, manifested in the, uh, in the dialogue and in, in the collaborations between the um, community uh, participants. And in these two examples, you can see on the left something very nice, very uh, symmetrical, something like a little flower. Um, and on the right, something rather chaotic, I would say. Um, if we could talk now with each other, I would ask you, uh, why do you think these shapes are, are different? I will tell you. Um, on the left, you can see the, a very, um, actually, actually a very well-known phenomenon on the internet, the Me Too phenomenon. So something is, is posting something and uh, somebody else is saying, thank you, that's very interesting. I found, I found that really extraordinary. And then everybody else, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too. And this is what it looks like. Um, this is not, not really a, a collaborative dialogue. A collaborative dialogue is more on the right side. That looks very chaotic, but it still has its own uh, patterns. And uh, it looks like everybody's talking to everybody, um, probably um, following their own um, thoughts and um, problem solving processes and yes probably their own uh, learning goals so we assume that learning happens much more on the right than on the left and the uh, the central result we we got um, was about newcomer integration um, Lane and Wenger's theory on uh, communities of practice um, has an, a very own, very special definition of learning. Learning as legitimate peripheral participation in a community of practice. So we can see here communities, um, we can regard them as communities of practice and um, they have a, a center where um, uh, the people who, who are most important and who uh, participate most intensive are situated so in the center that's much activity important responsibility and knowledge it happens that uh, the community center is in the diagram center here on the left um, on the right Probably not. So uh, the most active participants are the largest um, dots. So that, that's somewhere, somewhere on the left. And um, it looks like the periphery of the community is more on, on the right on, of, of the right uh, diagram. Because you see, everybody, everything is very dense and very active on, on the left side. And as we go to the to the right, it's um, less, less happens. Um, Wenger and Leif define um, learning as participating in such a, a, a social and cognitive 
pattern and integrating in the practice and in the discourse that we, we see here. Um, it's, it's always a question if newcomers, so people who, who come to these communities, maybe they have a question, maybe they're just curious to see what happens there. Um, it's an open question if they get integrated. Um, integration of newcomer is the key to learning in, um, in, in communities in online communities as well. So uh, we ask ourselves, uh, if we analyze the dialogue in online communities, can we predict um, a newcomer integration? Yes, we could. So um, it's not only the shape, like a flower shape. This is a, a beautiful shape, but it's not integrative. So this is, if everybody says, me too, me too, me too, uh, there is hardly any dialogue, any, any discourse where newcomers can be integrated in order to learn something. Um, integration happens in communities as the one we see on, on the right. And um, well, it's probably not a, the moment to, to show results, but uh, we could, based on, on dialogue analysis, we could uh, do a rather accurate, um, rather accurate uh, prediction of newcomer integration. Um, and most, in, most interesting, uh, we could uh, predict more accurately the difficult cases. So if somebody uh, comes to a community and uh, gets integrated, but our our system says, no, he won't be integrated. Um, that's not a problem. He will do fine. No, because he's integrated and he, he will have some, his dialogue and uh, his interactions and no problem. Um, if the prediction says he will be integrated, but he won't, that's a problem. So it's, uh, so both are um, confusion. They are the, those parts of the confusion matrix. Uh, but they, are, they have not the same importance. So to predict that somebody will be important, that somebody will be integrated when we, he will be not integrated, that's, that's a problem. Um, and this kind of, uh, of uh, error was in our prediction um, not, so, not so frequent. And that, that's the better part of it. Okay. And, um, what uh, did we did we do with with this? Oh, just another point. Um, we did not only predict integration. We also uh, conducted uh, intervention studies um, to see what um, what the factors influencing integration would be. Um, so in, in the first study, in, in this one, we were purely descriptives, uh, descriptive. Um, in, in this one, we, we tried to do something. Uh, one of my students just visited many, many communities and asked a question that we had standardized. And we registered in, in the next days and few weeks uh, which um, kind of response the community uh, gave. So we had all kinds of responses from uh, blocking uh, newcomers, uh, deleting their, their postings with, with the questions, uh, through um, giving a simple answer, to um, integrating, really integrating um, our student in, in a discourse and uh, answering the question in, in detail and um, asking themselves something else and so on. Um, so we found two yeah, logically different sizes of uh, newcomer integration. So newcomer integration is first of all a, a question of inquiry format. 
So it's about how the question was asked. Uh, there was a difference between um, just saying hello and I have a question, I have the following question and ask. A difference between this and um, coming, um, listening, reading, um, talking, a, a, a bit of small talk, and after this warm up, um, oh, by the way, I have a question. Could you please tell me, blah, blah, blah. So that, that makes a difference, and it does have an influence on uh, newcomer integration. On the other part, on the other side, uh, there is something established in, in uh, communities. The previous uh, study suggested exactly this. Uh, so if a community integrates or doesn't integrate newcomers, uh, that is established in the long term in the quality of, of the collaborative dialogue. So what happens in, in the long term, uh, the interaction and the, the discourse, um, based on a social uh, and cognitive structure, so mainly who are the participants and um, how much or, or what they know about uh, what's happening there. Um, uh, a special quality of, of the dialogue um, is established and that um, has an influence of, on uh, newcomer integration. And there was also a, a difference depending on uh, what has been discussed. Um, there is a big difference, if we go back to this one, on the left, uh, the beautiful flower is a, is a community uh, exchanging, um, Cook, cooking receipts. <laughs> so that's, that's a so-called well-defined uh, topic. So you have a receipt and you have all these ingredients and you do very uh, certain things so, so that you can get your uh, well, food pictures. <laughs> that's very different on the right. Um, this apparently chaotic uh, community um, it, that was a community of teachers of mathematics discussing how to use technology uh, for teaching mathematics. And that, that is, um, you know, th there is uh, an infinite number of ways in which you can use technology to teach. And that's, that's a, a, an ill-defined Ill topic. So um, many uh, correct answers are probably not much wrong um, and everything very, very open. Well, um, so much about um, integrating newcomers. And um, what did we do then after we um, found out um, about integrating newcomers? Uh, this is where the smart community comes. So, first, it was a, a, a university course. So this this is just a, one of my seminars in a very formal uh, framework. Um, but a part of of the usual um, activity in the course that is anyway. Um, highly interactive. A part of this um, activity and this interaction was carried out outside in the internet. So um, this is how the, uh, the seminar uh, is built. So we have a kickoff meeting and first of all my students had to um, just observe blogger communities. As I told you before there is a difference between observing and getting a little bit involved in, in, in the community discourse or going there, boom, I have a question, please tell me how. Uh, so um, they, they need to get a feeling what to do in such an environment. Most of us know, I suppose, but um, not everybody and not all students. So this, this has to be prepared. And uh, the main part, we have two blocks uh with such cycles so first of all 
um, my students had to prepare questions. The questions were about using technology to teach mathematics. Um, so we discussed in, in the classroom, face to face, uh, how would you ask this question? Then um, they went there, asked their questions, got their answers, and reflected. They, they came back out, out of the community, back to the, uh, to the classroom, to the face-to-face -face setting. And uh, we had a, a collaborative uh, reflection uh, on those, um, on, on the interaction and on, on the uh, information they got with, with the answers. Um, and in the end, we had a, uh, we, we saved the results. We, so the students put them in a, uh, in a similar paper and got their grades, of course. Um, the best, so of course we evaluated um, this learning environment and um, in my opinion, the, the best, the definitely best result of this evaluation was that uh, not becoming integrated, integrated was not a problem. So we use the automated prediction of, um, uh, of, of newcomer integration uh, to save time. So if a student goes there and does his best to get integrated and to get in touch and in dialogue with, with the community and nothing happens, which is not excluded, it, it is always possible, it will be such a waste of time. Uh, and we cannot afford that uh, in, a uni in a formal university course. So uh, we had a, a very, very long number of uh, communities uh, that discussed relevant topics for our course, but not all of them were integrative. So we need first um, this selection to see by means of dialogue analysis, uh, what are the, the parts of this very large um, environment that is the, the internet. Um, so integrate, newcomer integration was very, very important, but if it didn't uh, happen, so this is not totally excluded. We had, I think, one or two cases from about 30 uh, groups of students. Um, that was not a problem because they had reflected and they had elaborated on their questions and they did their best to, uh, to, get, to, to ask good questions and to, to get uh, good answers for their questions. Um, it, that was not a statistically significant difference, but it was just a tendency that uh, those who did not become, become uh, integrated um, had a bit better uh, learning results. Anyway, um, everybody has learned um, a lot and uh, our students were very happy with, uh, with this seminar. So this is one example of what I could call um, smart community. So smart uh, based on this capability to predict um, the main, uh, the essential part of the learning process and to make sure that it, um, it happens. So what, what is smart? I'm, I'm trying to draw some, some conclusions. So at first place, we, we addressed humans. So we didn't place the technology in, in the center of, of this uh, development. So we focused on, on humans, on, on learners. And that is, we addressed um, human um, learning. And this uh, address was based on um, learning sciences. For instance, um, we have Vygotsky um, that defined the grounds of, of the modern psychology and um, Bachtin, so one of, the, of uh, Stefan's favorite uh, <laughs> psychologists, 
um, and all those who uh, examined research, did research on uh, human collaboration. Um, so again, with a, we had a, a, a strong uh, educational scientific um, background. Um, yes, and thus the technology we employed addressed human learning. So technology was built to address human learning. And um, what we actually did was to find um, to find uh, meaningful applications of this technology. And that is to uh, create a context where human learning was empowered by technology. And this is what we can call um, technology-based learning environment. And finally, um, I, I have added this point later after, after the entire presentation was, was finished. Um, because I thought at some point, this is a very, very important point. We want interdisciplinary. And um, it's interdisciplinary between computer sciences and educational sciences and psychology. But this, these are just, um, just few of, of the many uh, possible combinations that we, that we can also see um, more of them this time in, um, in the structure of, of the Munich Center of the Learning Sciences. So there are very many perspectives and very many ways in which uh, psychology and the learning sciences more generally um, can interact with, um, with learning and with uh, technology. Okay, I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Here's my email address if somebody uh, would like to write me. Um, and I think we still have time for a few questions. Yes, you're spot on time. So yeah, 11 minutes before. So thanks a lot for the awesome presentation. Any questions from the audience? I saw Carlo already posted the, the questions in the chat, but maybe he prefers to ask them directly. Uh, then I think I'll also have a look at the chat. Um, okay. You can read directly on the chat. <laughs> yeah, but the personal touch. Okay. It felt more natural. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. Okay, no problem at all. Okay. Um, since you were talking about uh, integration, but you were also talking, you, know, you, refer, you were talking about referring to human, also to human learning. So my question is, uh, how did you measure it, the learning effect? And moreover, if you took in consideration on the background, the motivation of people. So this is the engine of everything. So just to know if by chance you consider also motivation. Um, so measuring learning, that's, uh, thank you very much. That's, that's a, uh, that's a very interesting and actually a difficult question. Um, measuring learning, yes, we, we graded. <laughs> we graded the student work and uh, that means we... But in an informal way. I mean, you are in an informal setting in some way. So, I mean, uh, this is a sort of informal uh, learning, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it, we were, it was kind of... Uh, uh, a request to, to measure learning and to, to grade it because of the formal uh, context. Um, but if we are talking about effects, uh, so strict, in a strict sense, in a strict methodolog methodological sense, uh, measuring learning means uh, comparing um, a treatment group with a with a reference group and using um, validated, calibrated instruments and so on. Um, we, we didn't go that far. So it was a, uh, so it was a rather detailed um, assessment of, of learning, of the learning process. Um, and the final result where, where we can say they learned something um, 
where the, the, the where the grades and at the same time we also asked the uh, subjective learning effect so um, how much do you feel that you have learned in, in this uh, seminar and the results were were good they, they were um, high high numbers but what did um, these numbers um, have to say <laughs> because it's also a question of, uh, of calibration. Um, did I answer your question? Yes, more or less. I, 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 I know that it's difficult. I mean, so I, I just wonder if there, were, there was any, any way uh, to measure not just integration in a group, but also the learning that derived from being a part of the group. That was my, my question, actually. But I mean, I guess that it's somewhat difficult. Maybe it takes uh, uh, more development of the techniques that you were using. So, but, okay. You can always do um, yeah, knowledge tests, but we didn't do that. Uh, okay, so, um, was there a second part of your question? The second part is, uh, is by chance you had the possibility to uh, get some hints about the motivation of people to be part of the, uh, of the uh, let's say, the community, so to, to participate, to, to provide, uh, to learn. I mean, motivation is the engine of everything, as you know. So, I mean, just uh, if by chance you had some... Uh, information you, you can get some information about the motivation um, theoretically um, according to most um, motivation theories in psychology um, uh, social interaction is one of the strongest uh, motivational factors so this is what we expected and um, and we didn't measure that systematically, but um, well, some, were some students were motivated, some students were less motivated as always. Um, and yes, I think some of them um, were really motivated and uh, very, very interested in uh, getting in touch with people they didn't know. These were US American teachers of mathematics using uh, technology for teaching. Um, and um, yes, I think that was a ground motivation to get in touch with those people and um, see what they do and maybe exchange ideas or anyway, asking questions and getting answers. That was very engaging for, for my students. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, so sharing the slides, no problem. I will um, send them to you. Um, Donatella also has a question, so she posted it on the chat, but maybe she prefers to also to ask it in person. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, it was too long to write in the chat, so I only mentioned it. Um, I see you have been using SNA uh, social network analysis uh, to represent uh, the discussion, the shape of the discussion between participants into a community. And um, I've done some work in that direction too, but I was quite unhappy about uh, the way uh, SNA represents uh, uh, the, the, the way people interact, because the links do not usually, I don't know in your case, but that's the question actually, don't usually represent the existence of a message from a person to another, but they, they represent the existence of a reply to a message because otherwise if people interact in a forum, when they send a message to the forum, they would virtually send a message to everybody and the network would be saturated uh, very fast. So um, I didn't like this, uh, this uh, solution to the problem of the excessive saturation because it actually ignores, for example, messages that never received a reply. And also 
uh, ignore the fact that there's a difference between sending a message to the forum and sending a message to the whole community. So I was wondering whether you are also unhappy about this uh, weakness or whether you found a solution. Uh, that's the question. Thank you very much. That's a wonderful question. Um, yes, I, I know this, this point very well. Um, and uh, so only the, that, uh, that study I called classic was really a social network analysis and in the sense of person A says blah, blah, blah to person B. Um, and yeah, we, we had a lot of thinking of and discussing uh, about um, what are the advantages of, of the bench, of, of the automated analysis. Um, and we were, we, we were also stimulated by the reviewers who, <laughs> who said, mm, that's not really a difference. What, what is new here? It's, um, okay, so uh, we came to one, one of the conclusions we, we found, Mihai and, uh, and I, was uh, there is exactly what you said, um, implicit um, discussion partners. So I can explain something to you, Donatella, uh, but actually I'm talking to everybody. And if you register this as classic social network analysis, uh, that will be only from, from me to you, Donatella, uh, and not to everybody. But in fact, it is, I, I am saying this for everybody. Um, and um, our analysis, the modern one, uh, is based on cohesion network analysis. So that's not only uh, I know somehow that person A speaks with person B and to nobody else, uh, but I see what is being said and I see what the uh, similarities between this and, and other parts of the discourse are. And from this, I draw the conclusions who is speaking with whom. So this is, this is more than uh, uh, the uh, classic uh, social network analysis. It's cohesion network analysis. And it's also based on, on that concept of uh, voices. I think Stefan can, can explain that much, much better than I. Uh, so a voice is, um, you see the voices when you are looking at the discourse, you don't have to necessarily look at, at the participants. So a voice uh, is, a, is a kind of thread in the discourse and can be sustained by one or by many participants. Um, and also it can be, it can address different people. And um, so it's, it's a focus on, on discourse rather than on, uh, on people. And that, that has um, definitely advantages. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes, yes, you did reply to my question. Okay. Oh, I also saw Carlo as a follow-up. Uh... Uh, 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 just comment, but uh, he, he, the answer was very exhaustive. Uh, the comment is, of course, that uh, uh, this has to do with the structure of the forum. Uh, and this was the reason why, for example, in the forum that we developed in life, uh, we give the possibility to comment a specific uh, word or specific sentence of a, a, a given post. Because this will help uh, to understand exactly who is talking to who. And so there was a possibility to have, uh, to detect a one-to-one -one interaction uh, uh, in parallel to the one-to-many interaction. Of course, this is not possible with the, the standard block that you have uh, on, on, on internet. And uh, probably this is a feature that should be added some, sometimes. And uh, also the structured form does not have to match on that. But of course, uh, with the technique that you, uh, you have, this uh, can be sometimes overcome. Unfortunately, now uh, people do not, uh, students do not interact to, uh, a lot within the, 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 the let's say, learning environment forum, and so we cannot perform any longer any social network analysis. This can be done, uh, this, uh, we could be, uh, we were able to do this in 2010, 
but then i mean uh, after the the advent of the social networks uh, everything's uh, disappeared more or less and so now it's very difficult to get any kind of social interaction within the lending environment Indeed. any other questions if not we can still uh torture nick throughout the cough break so it's absolutely no problem Uh, if not, thank you very much for your uh, great talk and see you in the coffee break. Okay. Thank you very much. See you. And virtual class. Yeah.